my breakthrough moment was when one of my dearest friends was, he was the country manager of Google Saudi at the time, uh, presented to me something that we used to call the cat paper. Okay? And the cat paper, I think, was the turning point in my mind that we figured it out. So this was a, a, a white paper that Google published, I, if I remember correctly, 2009. And we had used some of Google's spare compute power to go and watch YouTube. Simply, we didn't tell them what to look for. We just said, go and watch YouTube. So the machine would cut YouTube videos into 10 frames per second, take all of those 10 frames and try to layer them on top of each other in a deep you know, learning network, in a deep neural network, and attempt to find similarities between them. Okay? That's all the machine did. It was really trying to find similarities, patterns that are reoccurring. We didn't know what those patterns were going to be. They, the machine could have come back and said, you know, there is more red than blue on YouTube. What it came back with is it basically said, I found something. And we couldn't even know what it found. We had to re write more code to, to tell it to explain to us what it found. Mm -hmm. And it had found a cat. Okay? YouTube. There you go. You're, you know, there is Brian Rose and cats. Right. Before, right? <laughs> before us, there were cats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. right? So, so the cat video. Yeah. So and, basically, lo tons of cat videos. Yeah. But but what the machine found was not like a portrait of a cat, and so any other cat that is portrait would be found. No, it found out what catness is, what being a cat is all about. You know that lazy entitlement, cuteness. Right. So so. Basically, the, when, you know, when, you, when we said, okay, call this a cat, the machine went out and found every cat on YouTube, hmm. then every dog on YouTube, then every nudity on YouTube, then every word on YouTube, then every Ferrari on YouTube. And you can actually do that today. You can say, you know, you can go, go to Google image search and say, find me pictures of yellow Ferraris, okay? It will find you pictures of yellow Ferraris that don't have the words yellow Ferrari in the title. It's, it understands what a yellow Ferrari is, right? At that moment, we used to call it unprompted AI. At that moment, we had found the breakthrough. So that hockey stick of the technology development curve moved from this very, very, very long and boring, no progress, no progress, no progress, from 1956 to, say, 2006. And suddenly, it goes through the roof. Like literally, almost vertical. Because you had the data and the computing power? Because you had the breakthrough, the right. tech breakthrough. And now you pour engineering. Right. Neural net, data, computer power, all the right exactly. time. And you, you, you guys noticed it. So you said this is And it. everyone, and, and, and I don't claim that Google has always been more advanced, I, I, I tend to believe. But, but everyone found it. Huh? And so, you know, at the time, DeepMind, an incredible organization here in, uh, in, uh, in the UK, uh, you know, them as the CEO is an amazing human being. Google had to acquire them because they were so far ahead in you know, understanding how to teach uh, computers how to have neural networks, how to have a, a structure that's similar to the brain structure by, by having uh, machines play Atari games. Okay? And, and here's the, the interesting thing. When, uh, I don't remember the exact date. I think it must have been 2014, 2015. Don't quote me on this, but the first time we acquired uh, um, uh, DeepMind, Demis comes to, to our uh, Golden Circle meeting, so the VPs and senior VPs, and he presents. And if I recall correctly, he do you know the, the Atari game that was called uh, Breakout? So yeah. bricks on top. Yeah, I used to play it. And, and he said, uh, if I, uh, if I remember correctly, he said, so we trained the machine for a few days, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, um, three, three to four days, uh, sorry, three to four hours hmm, to play. But remember, these are highly parallel machines. So there are, you know, many of them playing at the same time and teaching each other. Hmm? And, and it started to hit the ball, you know, it, became, it played like a, a child. A few more hours and it started to never miss the ball. A few more hours, and it started to develop strategy. So it would poke a hole in the corner of the, of the, of the wall and then th send the ball up, up there. And the thing is, we never told it what to do. We just told it, here's the controller, maximize that score. Right. That's it, right? And it plays and plays and plays and plays. Now with the ability to, now that you found the breakthrough and the breakthrough says, create patterns, layers of observations of patterns, and just from those patterns develop intelligence. Very similar, very similar to how a child learns, right? Okay? 
once we found that it was just a matter of time and understand when you're inside the factory hmm, I knew inside I knew it was you know of course you 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 sort of like downtone your enthusiasm so we said maybe 20 30 years and we'll have very intelligent machines and just breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough and here we are having wonderful conversations with chat gpt and you know with bard and we were just completely controlled by uh, machines that are recommending videos for us and content for us uh, you we're we've passed the turing test so it's actually extremely difficult to know the difference between a machine and a human on the internet anymore and there we are and and as that chart is literally almost vertical Hmm? We still don't talk about it. We talk about Russia and Ukraine. We talk about economic challenges. We talk about, uh, you know, all important problems. But this is the one. This is the one that's going to define humanity without, uh, uh, um, you know, our involvement at all within two to three years time. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real. And he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families and our communities because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. 
a banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.